What's up guys, Brad here with Shiny Tech Things, where we tech things seriously. And on today's show, we got a new Lenovo. This is the IdeaPad 3. This particular model has the latest Intel i5 1135G7 at 2.4 gigahertz, eight gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this. out. Oh look, this is to you. Let's see what it says. Oh, likes are free. Thank you. Let's go ahead and take this laptop out of the packing materials. And here it is. got a Lenovo services pamphlet on the inside and here is the charging brick so next I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and boot it up hi there I'm Cortana and I'm here to help a little sign in here a touch of Wi-Fi there and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do so I'll go ahead and turn off Cortana she never listens anyways now it's important to not connect to Wi-Fi whenever you have Windows Home and not professional, so that way you can still create a local account if you don't want to use a Live ID account. I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything that we're not going to use, and then continue. Alright, so I went ahead and installed all the Windows updates. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what comes pre-installed and what we want to go ahead and remove from preloaded bloat. So we're going to go ahead and type in Control. Go to the control panel and go to uninstall a program. So here we just have the McAfee uh, Live Safe, uh, the Lenovo preloaded software for uh, updates, which is the uh, Vantage service, and voice service, Office 365, Edge, OneDrive, Microsoft Update Health Tools, and the C Read Distributable Pack. And that's about it. So we'll just go ahead and uninstall McAfee. So it's nice to see that on this particular model, the Lenovo did not install a bunch of bloat on it, which is a nice feature. Now the touchpad is off-center over to the left. It has a typical feel for this price point of a laptop. The uh, body is uh, nice and feels kind of like an aluminum plastic-ish type uh, build construction. The hinge assembly is again uh, pretty much just average. Now coming on up here. This actually has a physical switch, so you don't have to go ahead and put a piece of tape on here to cover your webcam, which is pretty cool. You just simply slide it to the left and it turns red, or you slide it over to the right and it opens it up. So it's a physical switch to prevent any unauthorized access over to your webcam. Now taking a look here at the keyboard, it does have a decent amount of flex. I'm not sure if you can see that. But again, that's very typical at this price point. And flipping it over, the bottom is just a standard uh, plastic chassis. And if you just open the lid, it appears to just boot itself up automatically. So here's a pro tip. If you go ahead and press F2 to get into the BIOS when you first turn on the machine, you can come under the configuration and under here there's a couple of things you want to take a look at. There is the flip to boot which is enabled by default. So earlier when I went ahead and just opened the machine and it turned on automatically that was by design. And it is the default setting as well. Now if we come down here under the system performance mode the default is intelligent cooling but if we go to extreme performance that allows the system to run at full speed. And I'm gonna just come over to exit and say exit saving the changes. Now if we take a look at the specs of the system, this has the 11th gen Core i5 1135G7. Now that has the Intel Iris Xe graphics GPU built directly into the processor. 
It comes with 8 gigs of RAM and a 250 gig NVMe Western Digital SN530 SSD. It also has a Wi-Fi 6 AX201 Intel card in it. So overall, it's got pretty powerful hardware at a reasonable price. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a video here so you can actually see the raw video quality. And here is the uh, video quality and sound quality directly from the built-in webcam. And again, I'm using this uh, light here, and I'll turn off the light so you can see what kind of noise that it gets uh, with just the ambient light that's up above me here. And with the video light back turned on. So on the left side of the chassis, you have a headphone jack, an HDMI port, a USB-C port, a standard USB port, and also the power port. On the right side of the chassis, you have a standard USB port and a SD card reader. Let's see how easy it is to upgrade the uh, IdeaPad 3 here. Using the splitter, go ahead and remove the base. And here we can see the processor and heat sink in the fan. It's actually a pretty nice design here. Feels pretty heavy duty. You've got the NVMe drive right underneath this thermal pad. And it looks like the memory is just soldered to the board. Uh, but you can go ahead and swap out the Wi-Fi card here if you like. Now here on the inside of the bottom of the chassis, you have a uh, you have some sheets here of copper to go ahead and help with some of the conduction of the heat for cooling purposes. So this will go ahead and be directly over the NVMe SSD, helping it stay cool using the thermal pad to conduct the heat to the chassis. It would have been nice to see the bottom having actual uh, metal, like if this was made of aluminum, but again, at this price point, uh, it's just not really realistic. All right, so after playing with the laptop for uh, several hours, uh, I've come to the conclusion that the touchpad, although it is pretty nice and has some solid clicks, is not quite MacBook-esque with its accuracy, uh, although it's not bad. Compared to other laptops in this price range, it's about average, maybe a little bit better than average, uh, but still it's not a MacBook for the touchpad. But still it can't compare to any of the MacBooks. So who is this laptop for? Well, if you are a student or looking for just a inexpensive work laptop, the highest end model goes for about 800-ish dollars. Uh, there are some sales and stuff online and you can get some touchscreen models and IPS displays for about 679 or so. And I'll go ahead and leave some links down in the description as well for you. Now, it is not a gaming laptop uh, because it just has the built-in Intel Iris Xe uh, GPU, but since it has the latest 11th gen Intel processors in it, it is going to be the fastest that Intel offers that is built into the CPU. So, that being said, it'll be able to handle most uh, games on probably their default uh, medium to uh, low settings for any of the graphics configurations in the games. So if you're only going to be doing some light gaming, then this might be a good laptop for you. However, if you want to be able to run the latest titles with the highest resolution settings for your graphics, then this is not the laptop for you. Now one of the cool things that I uh, came across uh, after I was recording everything is that if you hold down control and press the letter Q, you can actually cycle through the different cooling profiles for the fan, which is kind of cool. The battery on this model is supposed to be able to last up to seven and a half hours. Uh, since I haven't been able to spend days with the system unplugged, I cannot vouch on how accurate that is. But for most people, it's probably more than enough, especially if you're just a student or even if you're working on the laptop with the majority of the time having it plugged in.